Hi, it's Brian from Everything X Carve. I'm going to show you today how to take this and turn it into this. Stay tuned. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. It's Brian with Everything X Carve. Today I'm going to talk about how I ordered the machine from Inventables. Uh, what size I chose and then uh, the waiting game what I did before I actually got the boxes here and then the setup. So when I got the machine there was an option to choose the bed size that you wanted for your X-Carve. I decided that I wanted the thousand millimeter bed so I could do the largest possible cuts and carves that I could uh, as well as you know the price option uh, I felt was the best for uh, the buck. Uh, it came in around $1,900, but that was also with um, the different clamp sets, a starter bit, my Z-Probe leveler, which is an absolute must, and uh, there's a lot of controversy on this bad boy right here, uh, the dust boot, as far as the price, but I will tell you uh, we'll get into this a little bit later. It was worth every single penny. So everything here costs roughly, like I said, about $1,900. Uh, Inventables has changed up the way that you order these machines even since I got my, my machine back in September. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Inventables website at inventables.com. We're going to click Get Started. And that'll take you to where the machines are. There are three different machines that you can choose from. There's the 500 millimeter, the 750 millimeter, and then the 1,000 millimeter. They come in different options, which was not something that they had uh, when I initially ordered mine back in September of 2018. The fully loaded and the advanced customization, uh, for me, if I was brand new and didn't really know anything about it, I would go with the fully loaded for the most part. I pretty much did minus the uh, V-Carve Pro and getting V-Bits. This is a great addition that I've seen that they've done that I absolutely enjoy uh, seeing them progress how they are putting together their packages and really the price difference between the 500 and the 1000 millimeter isn't much of a difference uh, so if you have the opportunity I would go with the larger depending on uh, your workspace area so if we were to go to the, the large 1000 millimeter X carve you can see that in the United States it's 110 volts and then in Europe they've got the 240 volt. Once you click that you click add to cart and this will tell you what is included in your kit. You have the X-Carve 110 volt DeWalt 611 spindle and mount, X-Carve 1000 millimeter wasteboard, X-Carve drag chain kit, the rail kit, the controller kit, the stepper motors, the Z-Probe, the X-Carve sideboard kit, the dust control system, the homing switch, Easel Pro, uh, which is a $99 annual membership. Uh, then the X-Carve tool clip uh, kit. This tool kit uh, is something that, you know, Allen wrenches, wrenchers, it's just stuff that if you have, it's not something that you really need to get. And then the clamp set for 3D carving and, and digital calipers. So for me, uh, not having this option when I first got it, I probably would have done this instead of going the route I did because it pretty much cost me about the same amount when all said and was done uh, with the exception of me not having uh, the Easel Pro for the one year to use. I did get a carving bit starter set uh, just because I did not know what to look out for. This is the first time that uh, I had actually physically got to see a machine up front close without going to YouTube 
or, or looking at uh, different websites uh, in pictures. So they have a great selection of things to choose from. Now, if that's not for you, and you wanted to get rid of doing the full package and choose advanced customization, if you're familiar with 3D carving, you can build it to how you see fit and your customization. Uh, well, this is pretty much what I had to do when I first got mine. So if we went into the X-Carve for the customization, it still kind of walks you through the same steps, but then you have to go through and determine what you want included. So the waste board, I had a dust control, I added a sideboard, I did not have Easel Pro. I did get the precision collet kit for the 1/8 precision bits. I got the clamp set. I already had a digital caliper, but if you do not have one, I would highly recommend that you get one. This is how you're going to measure your different work pieces as far as the the depth of the wood that you're going to use, and that is really a must have if you do not have one. So that being said, if we look at it here, based off the way that I did it versus what they've got it now, I really didn't save that much money. Okay, so now that it's ordered, now what? It's the waiting game. And that's one thing that uh, a lot of people that I've seen in, in forums, uh, different Facebook pages, they're really excited to get the machine, but they have to wait. Aww. The next step that I took was to see if I could find the parts list and assembly instructions and maybe a couple different video tutorials on YouTube to learn how to start putting it together before I actually had it. So now that I have the machine well ordered, the next step I did is I printed out a parts list. And the reason why I did that is it's really important. There are a lot of parts and uh, in shipping, there are seven different boxes that came with my machine. Uh, for everything that I needed uh, to put together my X-Carve. So shipping took about seven days to get this done uh, and shipped to me uh, in a couple different days. I think I got all of my package over three different days. Printing out the part list was huge. Uh, I then got a different work table that I had set out and I put every little package that they had on the table and layered it out uh, by part number because the part numbers they go in a, a numerical order and that really is the easiest way to determine uh, if you have everything in the package if you don't call up Inventables and uh, their customer service is absolutely phenomenal I got overnighted uh, I had everything but I had one part one little bolt that was actually bent they overnighted it sent me two actually and uh, I was able to get back to building my X-Carve. Uh, so after I laid everything out, the next thing I did is I made sure I had a full list of uh, the instructions available on my computer. And uh, Inventables has a video to content creator, the new Brit Workshop. Uh, this gentleman, huge, huge help in uh, putting together my X-Carve. He had a 750 millimeter version but it was very similar. Everything was fairly close except for the size to put together the X-Carve. So Newbrit Workshop is definitely the way to go to watch how to put together your machine as well as uh, referring back to the digital instructions. Uh, that was a huge, huge time saver for me so I could actually physically see what somebody else was doing on how they put together their X-Carve. Once I got everything put together, I, I had watched some different videos on it being level. New Brit did a good job of, of showing how to level his machine. I wanted to take it a step further and make sure everything was completely level. Uh, there is a video from Worth Effort that I'd also like to mention where he takes it and gets it down to business card level with his Z Probe business cards and putting it on the bit and making sure that everything's level. And how he did it was by adjusting the screws here and raising it up or lowering it. He also goes into further detail on the machine settings inside easel under advanced settings. 
I would recommend you only do that when you really know what you're doing. You don't want to mess anything up there. There's a lot of different uh, sites that you can go on, uh, the Inventables Forum to look at that. Uh, but he does break it down to really get it zeroed in to the best uh, that anybody could get it zeroed in, as well as playing with the Greeble settings, uh, the firmware that runs the, the stepper motors and the machine itself. So I would recommend that uh, it's definitely worth the watch uh, to see how he does that. Uh, if you don't have a caliper, this is definitely something you'll want to get. Uh, to measure your wood, there's two different ways to do it. You can measure it just by hitting it down that way. And that will bring up and show you that this wood is 0.44 of an inch. Because uh, you're going to need to put that into the easel software, which we can get into a little bit later. But definitely a tool that you'll need to measure your distance, uh, excuse me, your width on uh, your, your carved pieces. Uh, Another huge thing, clamp sets. Uh, one thing that I, I did is not really knowing what to do in the advanced settings because I was a little afraid to do that at first. Uh, messing with firmware can, can really screw up some things, but the uh, easel made it very easy and simple. I've broken a few bits just simply by not knowing what I'm doing, uh, as well as ruining a clamp or two. Uh, this clamp as I was zeroing back to home, because I didn't have my safe zone set high enough, it was right here on the piece, and as it was zeroing back to home, it carved into it. So uh, this is 0.15 millimeters uh, in, the, in the setting. And so what I did is I changed my safe height to 0.18 inches, so I knew it wouldn't be going over my clamps. Uh, they're not expensive. Uh, I have a 3D printer I could print these out on. Or once you get a little more comfortable, you can simply carve a couple out. Uh, it's the benefit of this machine is as long as you have the file or you know a little bit about uh, CAD software, you can really do a lot with this machine. So once you've opened up Easel, uh, you will go through a machine setup the first time, uh, which I've already done. But the first thing that you're going to want to change is your work area, depending on your machine size. Seeing as I've got the 1,000 millimeter, I changed my work settings to 30 inches by 30 inches. So that way, my grid here isn't just at 11 inches. It gives me more workspace to see. This is where you'll change your dimensions of your workpiece and thickness. This is where that caliper will come in handy to show you just how thick your material is. There are a couple different options. Uh, if you don't have the type of wood that you see here, uh, it's always best just to kind of go with what you think, whether it's a softwood, hardwood, uh, and, and do some research on the different cut settings. Uh, this will definitely help you become a better uh, carver, especially being a new carver. Uh, so the settings on the safety rate, or the safety height here, as you can see it came default 15, 0.15 inches. I changed it to 0.18. Once that's done, uh, you'll want to make sure that your X controller is turned on and hit update firmware. Now what that's going to do is that's going to change your z-axis height so once it's done and going back to home that it doesn't hit any of your clamps that uh, that you've got and potentially not uh, breaking a bit in the same time which I've done on two different occasions. So you'll want to also check your wheels here and on your stepper motor area they have the capability of raising and lowering. You want to make sure that they're just tight enough to where you don't have any loose play. Uh, this will allow for your machine to uh, not wobble as much. If you do have a wobbling machine, 
that is one of the first places I would look and that should satisfy that. So if you're like me and you want to keep things looking new and nice, uh, this spoil board, I really don't want to ruin it. Uh, I think it looks awesome with the silk screen design that they have as far as the measuring. And as long as you're doing something that's not going to cut through your project, you don't have a problem with just putting on your project and, and laying it out. Now, that being said, if you are going to go through completely your project to cut something out, I would recommend getting a spoil board. As you can see, I've done a couple projects. I did my X-Carve computer stand on that CNC machine and cut that out but I use my spoil board to not ruin uh, the inventable spoil board because that uh, that spoil board uh, is not easy to to have that silk screen on so after cutting all of this out I can still lay this down I did end up uh, surfacing this with a half inch bit so that way everything was uh, as flush as possible prior to uh, doing the threaded inserts. Now how I drilled these out is I lined up my project, I clamped it down, I found a file on uh, Inventable's website under the projects and I used that and removed the extra holes that I didn't want for the size that I chose. This is a 24 by 24 uh, square piece that I did and I chose to have it go almost all the way down. I did not want to go into my spoil board at all so I just took a drill and drilled out the rest and then once that was done I got my M5 threaded inserts, which is what was recommended uh, because this is what Inventables uses on theirs. And I screwed in every single one of these in and I would recommend doing it with a drill and set your tension to about four. So that way you're not burling any through further. I also went one step further and I, I got a I then got a bit from Harbor Freight for, I think it was like two bucks uh, to help bore out this a little bit around the edges to sink it down in so everything's flush. That way when it lays on my board I don't have any raises or lowers and it fits flush with my board. Uh, I also found a square on Inventables to help keep my project with my zero point as well as making sure that once I've got it screwed in everything lines up screw this in with some screws and I can bring that down on my wood project but if I'm cutting through I'll simply put it on here line everything up and then I would pop my screws that I got from a big brand store down in to lock these into place which I'm not going to do on the video <laughs> but uh, then I can lay my project here and not worry about my spoil board these were all things that I found as I'm getting ready to carve more and more things uh, it's going to help protect my spoil board from uh, being ruined uh, one thing I would recommend though this is MDF spoil boards do uh, swell with moisture. Uh, some people I've seen uh, will shellac it or just do uh, some sort of some uh, sealant to prevent it from from warping or or obtaining that moisture. Me, I'm going to leave it alone because I've got this spoil board here to worry about uh, and if it gets ruined it's not a big deal. I can go to a big box uh, hardware store and get a whole 4x8 sheet of this for under 25 bucks. If you guys like what you're seeing, please hit that like button. 
Uh, for me, it shows me that uh, you're interested in what I'm sharing with you. Uh, and if you'd like to see more, I welcome you to subscribe to the channel. I will try to get some videos out uh, weekly. If not, they'll be two to three times a month, uh, just based around work. And I'm also a full-time student, so I don't get to play with the X-Carve as much. And I think this is a reason uh, why I'm doing the channel, because it's going to motivate me to get out here and play with the machine more. Um, it also allows me to, to learn more. Uh, and to research more on different projects that I want to do. Uh, so thank you for your time, and I'll see you next episode. Don't forget to go check out the New Brit Workshop on setup and install of the X-Card, and worth effort for leveling your X-Card bed. Have a great day.